Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albinos Really Pissed Off. So, okay. Some of you might have noticed, I uploaded episode 7 today. I deleted it very soon after that because it had a stupid mic crackle issue. It's just the whole time, it's crackling. It's the same thing Elgato's had a problem with for the last two and a half years and they've never fixed it and they apparently never will fix it. So I'm really upset, because this class trial was three episodes long, an hour each, the three hour class trial, all of that shit, because I recorded it all at the same time, was uh, unusable with distorted voice microphone garbage. I know it's not the microphone's fault, I know it's Elgato's fault, because I've used, tried it with two different microphones, and ne neither of the microphones ever had any trouble other than with Elgato. So... Because I cannot sit through the, th the same three hours again and try and like act surprised at everything that's happening, I don't want to. I don't want to like. I know if I did that, like my attitude would not be good during it. So I wouldn't want to subject y'all to that. What I've done is in the description of this video, you will find a link to a video that has like 350,000 views. It's of the class trial, just in its entirety, in one video. There's no commentary or anything, you just get to experience it. So if you're one of the people following this series that's never played the game and you're as blind as I am, and you really gotta know uh, what happens that way, then please watch that video or find, uh, you know, some other way to know. If you, you know, if you've played the games and you're just looking for, like, my reactions and stuff, then you, it's probably not that important that, the, you, that you'll be missing it. That's why in this video, if you only... Okay, I'm gonna tell you like how the class trial went. I mean, it's not gonna be like a throwaway like, oh, well this guy did it. Okay, next time, I'm gonna try and be like mildly detailed for the people who like want the story, like they just want the information. They don't necessarily need it in a three-hour thing that I'm not that I'm not that I wouldn't be in, right? Because my commentary is not in it at all. So, basically, this is how it shakes down. Again, leave if you don't want to experience it this way, but I am going to continue the series without the class trial being in it. Because I can't. I can't do it. For one, the minigames are atrocious. Danganronpa 2 class trial minigames are ten times worse than the ones in the first one. I do not understand them half the time, and they're extremely unresponsive, especially the music one. Like the one where it's like you do it in time with the beat, it's like the same as the first one, but it's a little different because it doesn't recognize when you have good rhythm. It just says you miss anyway. That's a lot of fun. There's another one where it's like truth slashes. We have to like slash through things that they say, but you have to do it like all, all the time, just forever. And you get it one after the other. Like, you use the same truth bullet and you slash, like, nine statements in a row and then you don't really even understand what's happening. But then other times you have to, like, listen and then slash the right thing. And I didn't get a handle on it. Then there's... They changed the Hangman's Gambit to be a lot more annoying now. So that was fun. I can't even really explain what they do. Uh, all I know is that it sucks. And I hate it. And then... It's actually maybe kind of good that you're spared this class trial, because I made so many mistakes right in a row that I probably elongated it by about 25 minutes. Longer than it would have if I'd just done everything correct. So, not to drone on, let's start with the story. I don't like having to do this, but I have to do this, because I can't do it. I can't do it again. I can't watch it all again. And you should watch it if you haven't seen it. You should watch it the way it's meant to be watched, because... There's some emotional things in there, kind of. You know, I mean, like, story-wise, like, for a class trial, as far as the, those standards go, it's a pretty standard class trial. There's some twists and turns, but there's nothing, like, totally revolutionary. Although, yeah, so anyway, this is how it starts. So they go to Monokuma Rock, right? And know that I have no bearing in my storytelling at all. I don't think I'm great at it. I'm, it's, and this is off the cuff, I probably should have had talking points. That would have been a great idea, but we're still doing it. They go to Monokuma Rock, they're, uh, an escalator flies out of one of the Rushmore heads' mouth, and then, and almost, like, lands directly on, like, half of them. They're standing, like, two inches from where it lands, that could have smashed a bunch of people. 
So they go on it, and they go up the escalator, they go inside the mouth, it leads to an elevator, it goes down inside the class trial room. Looks very similar to the first one. In the first game. So then they begin it. You know, who killed Byakuya? Why would they kill Byakuya? What's the motive, and why? who could have done such a thing? So they're, you know, going through the, the motions, seeing like, oh, well, you know, Byakuya was killed under the table, like... How could Byakuya have seen in the dark when the blackout was happening to go under the table? And the answer was that Byakuya was the one who brought the night vision goggles. He brought them in his Duralumin case. So when um, uh, the note, when he was sent the murder note, like someone will be killed tonight, like he prepared, he was ready for anything that could have happened. So in the Duralumin case, he had the night vision goggles. So when the blackout comes on, maybe he notices the timer or maybe he doesn't. All I know is that he was standing near the case, so he took, he put on his night vision goggles, and then he could see in the dark, he could see that, um, well, maybe I'm, I'm burying the lead here. He could, okay, well, I'll tell it this way, without spoiling, like, who's doing stuff until, like, the end. He could see a certain somebody using the lamp cord on that table to, like, make his way under the table so they could get the knife that they hid there, which Byakuya did not hide the knife there, by the way, it was somebody so somebody was going over there uh getting the knife and then byakuya saw him like went over there like what what the hell and then pushed the person out from underneath the table and then got stabbed through the floorboards with a very like long skinny like the, one of those iron skewers that they, that was missing from the equipment list and and uh mikan said in the autopsy like it was a you know it was five millimeters thick and like really long so he got stabbed through the floorboards, like I said, and like I thought. And so he bled out under the table. He died under the table. Nobody moved his body or anything. He was just under the table. So then you wonder, you know, the story's pretty incomplete at that point still. Because if the person who set up the entire thing wasn't the person who killed Byakuya. You know, the person set up the irons, those three irons, to do a power surge at the right moment, like right when um, the air conditioning alarms were set to 11.30, that's when those would turn on and sort of create the extra sort of power that was necessary to overload the system, and then that would cause the blackout. So they did that, and then they were gonna come over in the darkness, use the knife, and kill somebody. They didn't say who they were gonna kill. I, I, I'm not really sure who it would have been. That's never really come clear. But somebody else had their own little scheme going on, and so they were underneath the floorboards when the blackout was happening, and they just, you know, poked through. And that's not gonna make sense right away, but now I have to tell you the first big reveal of the trial, which is that Nagido is insane. He's like an insane person. He's like really twisted, low self-esteem, nihilist, like, uh, you know, I wanted to be the first one to kill, but... You know, because I just want to be a stepping stone for all you guys, you know? I wanted to set this going because then the other Ultimates, they would, uh, you know, just use me as a stepping stone to ascend to even greater heights. I could be a trauma that they could overcome and become better people for them. Because in his own twisted way, like, he loves them all. He cares about all of the other people. He really, but he, and he's so like nihilistically low self-esteem, he's like, I'm worthless, I, I don't, yeah. So what I could do to be useful is to just elevate them. So he's willing to die. He's willing, he wanted to be the first murderer, and then he wanted to get executed. So that it would just sort of start the whole Danganronpa process going. But, so, Nagido sends the murderous letter with intent thing. Nagido, you know, gets cleaning duty uh, so that he can put the knife under the table and set up the irons and all that stuff, set up the power surge, the remote, and all that thing. Uh, but while Nagido is setting all that stuff up, Teru Teru is in the kitchen preparing all the food. Teru Teru sees Nagido put the knife under the table and is like, oh, that's suspicious, confronts him about it. Nagido just straight up says, oh, well, yeah, I was gonna, you know, I was gonna try and kill someone tonight. And then Teru Teru's like, what? And then Nagito's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do it, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. So, how, how about that? And so Teru Teru's like, eh, and you know, that, and then that's the end of the conversation. Nagito just leaves it like that. He just sa says to Teru Teru, I'm gonna kill somebody. 
and then just lets him know about his plan. So, as the events progress, and this stuff actually happens, Teru Teru uh, takes one of the iron skewers, he goes down underneath the floorboards, he's trying to kill Nagido. He wants to kill Nagido to stop him from killing whoever Nagido's gonna kill. Because, you know, he sees Nagido go under the table to put the knife in it, right? So, uh, Teru Teru's like, oh, well, you know, I'm gonna wait in total darkness under the floorboards, and when I see the knife move, that'll be because, you know, Nagido's grabbing the knife, so I'll just, you know, stab up in the general direction of where the glowing paint is, and Nagido will be dead. But, obviously, Byakuya thwarts that, pushes Nagido out of the way, then is the one that dies. And so Teru Teru accidentally killed Byakuya. And then... After all that happens, and like before the trial, we have to jump around a little bit in terms of plot here. Nagido confronts Teru Teru about what happened, and like starts talking to him like, Hey, just so you know, I'm going to be your accomplice in this. I'm not going to tell anybody what happened. You know, I'm going to try and help you get away with it. Because Nagido, you know, wants everybody's... At this point, now that his plan has been foiled, um... He wants to help whoever is the Blackened succeed and, like, you know, rise above. Because, you know, it's his whole thing. And so, what happens after that? Um, right. So then the class trial happens and that's all revealed. Nagito reveals himself to be, like, the crazy person and tells everybody during the trial that, yeah, I set all this up. But then, uh, you know, there are things where it's like, they use different aspects of evidence. Like, oh, you know, Ibuki's hearing... Uh, the reason she heard Teru Teru's voice when everybody was, like, shouting and stuff was because Teru Teru was under the floorboards in the dining hall at the time. So he just acted like he was there. He used one of the portable uh, stove lights to light his way down into the storage room because that's where the trap door was that led under the floorboards was in the storage room. So he could have done all that without being noticed during the blackout without anybody seeing him because he closed the fire doors so that the light wouldn't travel down the hallway. And then Peiko was in the office, but she got, like, f not food poisoning, but, like, kind of? But, like, it wasn't anything Teru Teru did. She just, like, had a shit real bad. So she was hogging the bathroom, and that's why Nekomaru was upset all the time. Like, oh, somebody's in the bathroom. and has been there the whole time. It turned out to be Peiko. She was having a real tough time of it. And then, uh, yeah... You know, suspicion fell on Fuyuhiko at one point, but it was uh, surmised that there was no way to get under the floorboards from outside the building, and Fuyuhiko never stepped foot inside the building. The trapdoor in the storage room was the only way to get under the floorboards. So, yeah, everybody wanted to blame Nagido, but then Nagido came forward about, you know, his craziness. And then somebody suspected Teru Teru of hiding it. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember how suspicion fell on Teru Teru, but something happened. And he, Teru Teru, like, throughout, like, when he's being accused, he starts to fucking lose his mind. He's, apparently he's been hiding this Cajun accent the whole time. Where he's like, for a long time, he always been taught that if you try hard enough, you can accomplish anything. Like, he talks like that uh, in real life, apparently. And so eventually Teru Teru gets cornered because uh, they asked Munakuma to go bring in the giant meat dish. And that's where he hid that the murder weapon skewer because he put like a little bone clamp on the handle so it looked like a bone. Pretty good place to, to hide it, you know? And of course, you know, Terra Terra only wanted to kill Nagio, right? So it's not... He's not like a bad guy, but at the same time, like once he finds himself in the position he finds himself in, he killed the wrong person, you still have to try and get away with it because otherwise you die. Circumstances don't matter in that, at that point. So then... Yeah, Teru Teru keeps getting accused and, like, devolving. And then as soon as it becomes irrefutable that he's the murderer, uh, they start showing, like, some of his backstory. Like, why? Like, why would you do this? And apparently he has, like, a mother back home with an illness. And he was, like, the most worried about everybody there when Monokuma was like, oh, you know, you guys have lost, like, years of your life because we've wiped your memories. So then he's just like, what, well, what about my mom back home? Like, what's... What has happened to her? What's happened to the restaurant that we started? What's happened to my whole life? So he just really, you know, he's a mama's boy. He can't really handle what might be happening back there. So it, it kind of like helps him, his resolve, in terms of trying to get away with murder, because he really, he, he was going to sacrifice everybody just so he could go and see his mom again. And then his execution plays out. It's really weird. 
He gets, like, Monokuma comes in with a helicopter, shoots missiles at him, but they have, like, flour in them, so he just gets, like, floured, and he doesn't die, even though there's, like, giant explosions, which makes no sense, and there's, like, a giant missile that hits him, it's, like, a little butter, I have no idea, uh, but then, uh, the helicopter sort of hog ties him and starts dragging him over to this volcano and literally just drops him in the volcano to boil and die. So it's a tough, tough, tough way to go, as they say. But that's basically the past trial. Oh, the way they really got Terry Terry also was remember when Mekon tripped and like exposed herself in that way? Terry Terry was, you know, maintaining the whole time. You know, you know, I was in the dining hall with you guys that during stuff before right before the blackout. But then if he was, then he would have seen that and that was definitely something he would not have forgotten. He couldn't uh, tell anybody what had happened. So that, you know, so that sucks, you know, Bianca had uh, sacrificed his life to save Nagito, who wasn't necessarily going to kill him, but was going to kill somebody. And then Terra Terra killed the wrong person in an attempt to stop somebody else from killing him. It's a really despair-filled thing. So that's the story. After this episode, you know, episode 8 will begin exactly where I'm at right here with this dialogue. And then we'll just keep going and hope that my crap doesn't ruin anything else again. I've taken, I don't, I don't know what steps to take to prevent that, but hopefully I can at least do it to where if I lose an episode, I can just do that in one episode and not three hard that are all an hour long. So... Yeah, this is sort of the most that I can do to try and mitigate the loss of what we can no longer see. And again, link in the description if you want to watch the class file in its entirety with no voice editing commentary or nothing. I'm going to class file, I guess, mostly voice by the characters themselves, anyways, so it's not like you're missing out on a lot. Plus, I assume that the person doing it does all the names correctly, so that'll save you some grief. Thank you.